Liz Crotty is a former prosecutor with the Manhattan DA's office and has also worked as a criminal defense attorney in New York City. Liz, thanks for coming on tonight. Thank you so much for having me. It's so nice to meet you. All right, so let's just jump right in, right? You positioned yourself as the law and order candidate in a, in a field of progressives. What do you say to those um, who, who think that you might be out of touch with the national movement to elect justice reform minded prosecutors? Well, I don't think any prosecutor should be not mindful that the job is to do justice. So I just think it's more implied. Um, I've worked on both sides of the courtroom. And I think that working on both sides of the courtroom, I respect what the district attorney does and that the district attorney's office is a law enforcement job that has to treat everyone fairly and equally and um, represent victims and help keep innocent people from being victims. And I also very much understand the defense's role, where they have to make sure the defendant's rights are completely protected, that everything is done fairly and equitably. And, and I think that my having that respect on both sides is what makes me able to, to run this way. I just think that, you know, I want, what I what I like to say in reference to being a progressive prosecutor is that I'm just a lot more focused on being a fair and just prosecutor. And I think that we should put facts before we put policy. That That's, that's what I mean by not being a progressive prosecutor. Okay. Now, we watched George Floyd tragically be murdered by now convicted former officer Derek Chauvin, who was dispatched over a counterfeit $20 bill. Now, we've seen too often an alarming number of black people being killed after police have attempted to make an arrest for minor offenses or traffic infractions. All of the candidates in this race have said that they wouldn't prosecute low-level offenses, but you would continue to. Why? have said that I'm going to look at each and every case individually and look at the facts of each and every case. And as having been a defense attorney, you know, you really learn how to listen. And, you know, I've learned in my role as a defense attorney, there are bad decisions, there are bad days, there are bad circumstances, and there are bad acts. And you should prosecute accordingly. I think that we should um, look at the facts in each and every case and decide what is the appropriate thing to do in that case. And, and that's what I mean by um, looking at each and every case. And, it, and also, too, and hold people accountable. And holding people accountable does not mean that everybody goes to jail in the case. It just means that you're going to say, listen, we, can un we understand that you can do better. We want you to do better. Um, and we don't want you to come back. And how best can we ensure that that happens? Okay. Now, 60% of the people who live in Manhattan are white, yet a staggering 90% of people who come through the criminal court system there in Manhattan are black and brown. So if you implement tough on crime policies, would it not exacerbate those racial disparities? Well, no, I think you have to in implement smart on crime policies. And I think what I think everybody in every neighborhood wants to feel safe. And I think we have to work with the police. And I think we have to work with the communities. It is a partnership of all of the parties involved. It's not just police. It's not just prosecutors. It's also working with the communities, being responsive to the crimes the communities see happening in their neighborhood, and also being responsive to the people who represent the neighborhood and say, hey, this kid is different, or this person Person is different, or this is what's going on in this case, and not having a, a, a one size fit all policy, but really looking at the individual case so that we can get individual right, individual results, so that the right thing happens in each and every case. Uh, now, Liz, you have the support of every New York City police union, um, all of which have endorsed President Trump. Pat Lynch and Ed Mullians, two of the most prominent police union leaders in New York City, um, they've been criticized for what many describe as racist rhetoric and racist social media posts. How do you reconcile with the communities you seek to serve um, by accepting the endorsement of police who have made such comments? Well, I've gotten the endorsement of the police and the firefighters and the EMTs, and I went because I think that the fire, all of those people are the first responders and they help keep us safe. You know, the police also endorsed Eric Gonzalez. They also endorsed all the other sitting district attorneys, I think minus Melinda Katz. So I just think that what I'm coming at it from is a perspective of we need to work with law enforcement 
to make things fairer. And I think who they indict on a national level has nothing to do with what the job I want to do on a local level is. Um, all right. Well, uh I think I've got one more question just quickly. Um, what are you going to do? We talk about police accountability a lot, but we don't talk enough about prosecutorial misconduct. Do you have a plan in place if you were DA to address that issue? And if so, how? But yeah, I think we have to have avenues for people to report uh, prosecutorial misconduct. I think there has to be, you know, when you're running for this office, there is a conviction integrity review unit. I think part of that conviction integrity review unit has to be a mechanism for the defense bar um, and defendants to, to make complaints about prosecutors. I think we have to have a review system where prosecutors are reviewed on, you know, uh, like an annual or biannual basis and also on an individual basis so that if there are complaints we can address them as they happen so i think a reporting mechanism i think in this 21st century and a new technological world that we all live in i think transparency is going to be the hallmark of every every prosecutorial office so that we can be fully transparent as to what are what our mechanisms for reporting those things are and how we deal with those complaints once they arise all right, Elizabeth Crotty, candidate for Manhattan DA, thank you for your time tonight.